So what we're going to do is we're going to go over this game today. Uh, maybe two, maybe two, not really sure. The reason why I picked this particular game is because, one, it's Shibano, and two, I was actually not expecting the resignation when the resignation came up, which forced me to have to go back and figure out why and start counting and things like that. And I like games that take me by surprise. This is this one is kind of one that took me by surprise a little bit. So the game opens up as regular games tend to do with either 3-4 or 4-4 four, four stones. From Shibano we have dual 3-4 stones. So maybe we're not going to see influence today. Maybe he's going to play a territorial game. That'd be an interesting change. White backs off, black establishes micro. Okay, maybe we are going to get a framework. Micro does allow the building of a framework. White approaches. Now, I want to point this out because I see a, uh, some cues play this and not particularly the greatest thing to do in the world. Uh, and as I see a lot of people try to kind of like split this and invite their opponent to get like enclosures and stuff to go with the uh, uh, to play against or to go with the um, micro this used to be the old way of playing especially against the uh, mini Chinese you can see a lot of games where splits occurred here against tighter formation I'm not really sure if you want to invite that instead we see a lot of approaches these yield mm, interesting results Here, for example, we see a fairly straightforward Jiseki in which we attach. If you simply descend, then you're kind of inviting uh, this variation, and this variation leads into this lovely ladder which goes to white. I mean, by all means, you can invite this variation if you so feel like, if, as the, as black, you have the ladder breaker. But then as white, you never should have invited this in the first place if you don't already have it, so that would be extremely uh, bizarre. One really, really easy way of completely uh, avoiding that creepy ladder variation is to simply, instead of descending, is to attach. That way, even if your opponent, and he doesn't do it in this one, he goes up here, but even if your opponent tries to revert into the Creepy Ladder variation, you can say no to it and simply play the Hane. Uh, from here, there is no way that the Ladder variation can take place. I mean, there's the cut, sure. But you're pretty fine at this point because you're not surrounded. Took a stone for yourself. Might lose a stone in the corner, who knows. And all is well, no creepy ladder variations, nothing taking up the entire board, and all of that stuff. But this is Shibano, and Shibano is usually known for his influential kind of play. So he doesn't take that for himself, he takes this instead. And by this, I mean he plays the Atari. And now rather than going back and doing any kind of defense here for a shape point, he plays the Atari. This allows his opponent to Hane and cut. And now we're getting to a little bit of fight on the bottom of the board. However, as we can see here, locally it's a little bit difficult for black to live. But black doesn't seem to want to live. He just wants that amazing influence as white kills off his stones in Gote. Now we can take a Sente move and play elsewhere. True Shibano style. Gobaduk said all Jiseki so far and then immediately changed his mind. Yeah, instead of trying to do anything in here, he just sacrificed for the outside influence. Because Shibano's all about the outside influence. That's kind of what uh, interested in me interested me in his uh, style of play right from the start. 
is when I saw him sacrificing groups without a care in the world, like really large groups, no care in the world, just to get the influence and keep developing. That's That to me is, uh, says he's a rather bold player and he sticks with it too. He tries to do it against you know, Japanese, Chinese, Korean players, whoever he's playing against, that's just like what the man does. So all right, he sacrificed this for this, Sente, and he takes here. Now a lot of us would be like, I'm playing here. We could even say legitimately that, you know, this is my sector line now. Look at all the things that I'm growing. But there's a lot of algae behind I mean, There's the approach still. There's caps and shoulder hits still. There's approach on the outside still. I mean, something is going to live here in a very large way. This is saying this is a lot, uh, a lot more secure. We lose the easy approaches on the cornerstone. We have the caps and the shoulder hits still, but it's a little, a little bit difficult. <clears throat> a little bit more difficult. Response from white. Try to reduce. Okay. Now I don't like counting, but let's go ahead and count a little bit. Let's assume these stones are dead fairly easy assumption to make. Question is, where does black have that kind of territory, right? He's got the potential. He's got potential. But in terms of solid points, it's a little bit iffy. A little bit iffy. We can't really count like this as being solid points yet because it's still so open. We can't really count this as being solid points because it's still open. But he's probably going to get one or the other. So, white pincers, normal people would be like, okay, I'm going to jump out now, right? Especially greedy people would be, would be like, I'm going to jump out and look at the amazing area I'm laying claim to. Shibano just wants the right hand side, doesn't really care about anything else. So, look at that. He's really going all in on the whole I'm building a huge area thing. So white finally snaps and tries to reduce. Mm, interesting decision. It does mean we've got a shoulder hit onto the fourth line stone that was ignored. That's interesting to note. And a weak group to attack. So some of Black's moves here are very noteworthy. Like, what do you do when your opponent ignores the moves that you're making? Well, here, he simply follows up and makes himself stronger. He doesn't go and try to, like, take the fifth line territory or get another complicated fight and try to surround everything. He just follows up. Very non-greedy-like manner, which you would never have guessed from shoulder hitting like this. White continues. And again, now we would be contemplating, at least I would be contemplating how to attack this. Can I go after shape points? Can I surround? But all of these are incredibly, incredibly, um, not subtle. They are very not subtle moves. Black plays away. And just continues uh, to reduce white a bit. Establish areas on the other sides of the board. If we just try to do this until it's resolved, that makes handling this easier for white because it doesn't have to worry about the, corn, the weak group at all, ever again. He can make another weak group if he wants to. If you attack something until it's, until it's completely alive, no longer a weak group, you can make another one. If you really need to. So we've got that. We've also got this wonderful ladder breaker. So we defend. And that's enough, that's enough profit. He played here. We, in exchange, we got to approach the corner twice. Okay. 
Seem, that seems like profit. Profit doesn't always mean killing your opponent. Profit doesn't always mean attacking something until like you gain really huge area. Sometimes profit is simply something like this. You want to reduce me? Fine. What do I get while you're doing that? These are the questions I don't ask myself enough. Usually the question I ask myself is, you're trying to reduce me? How can I kill you? Oh, I can't. Where's the resign button? Those are usually the questions that uh, wind up popping up in my own games. Not so much Shibanos. So, okay, we got the corner. Further reductions. Doesn't even try to defend this into like a small area. He just defends the other weak stone. Black defends, or white defends, and black defends. Putting more pressure. I mean, look how, look how many stones white's used on the upper right-hand corner now. Those don't make any points. That's why this way is effective. That's why this is effective. Like all of those stones, that's not making points. But this, these, these moves certainly made points. These moves elsewhere certainly made points. So I'm not used to a player like this. I'm usually used to more, you know, fighty games, blood, destruction, gore, you know, th that kind of thing. But I really dig Shibano's style of play. So all right, we're living. Live, live, live. Gote, and he's alive, so we're not gonna play there. We're gonna play here instead. Now the idea here is we connect, and then I guess we make Snoopy and run away, trying to counter, trying to counter. Now we could absolutely play over here without any fear. No fear anymore if we, uh, if white responds here. So instead black, white comes out, because you can see this, right? There's no longer any pushing here, this doesn't matter. Whereas, like, if we responded immediately, then we can't really do anything there. So, okay. Black says, I need shape for my group. White says, I'm not letting you connect. And black cuts through. The two stones? Who cares about them? All we're doing is profiting. Like so. Stones are dead. But we got to extend. Is someone sawing wood nearby? No. I'm not sure why you're wondering if someone's sawing wood. I'm confused. It stopped? Okay, that's not creepy at all. Oh, it's the mouse. I'm sorry. Is it my mouse? Is it that? Oh, yeah. Maybe I should look into getting a quieter mouse pad. I are sorry's. Um, anyway, so yeah, we got this. I'm destroying my, my train of thought, it's completely gone. Right, so we give up the two stones, right? These two stones are gone. And in exchange, we got uh, these. This, this area that we're growing from. Only we group on the board, right? When we have Sente, we ask ourselves the dumb questions that a lot of people hate asking themselves, like, where are the weak groups? Well, the weak group is here, right? This is alive. This is pretty shapely. 
it's it, it's filling out quite nicely. This seems okay. This is a little bit of trouble. A little bit of trouble. But it seems like the only weak uh, area that black has is this one. So with Sente, we're going to attack. So immediately, we develop shape here for black. We're not going to worry about like responding and then being surrounded. That would kind of suck. It's like, you know what? You're attacking me. I'm going to grab some shape. And I'm going to try to grab some more shape. And I'm going to try to connect. It says no. But black says yes. And exchange for being surrounded. He gets to connect. In Gote, though. In Gote. So now we develop some influence. Now we develop some influence. A little bit of influence, but some influence. Now, if I were to ask your predictions for how this game was going to proceed, I have a hunch you would not get it correct. Because this game takes a drastic turn very, very shortly. White's next move with the influence, you don't want to build it with influence, you want to usually attack something with influence. So he tries to attack with the influence. Black simply defends. Looks like we've got a target painted on his group now, so we're going to connect up. And then white tries to expand. White suddenly doing a lot of things at once. He's trying to like play over here. He's now trying to expand over here. Seems like he's trying to do a lot. So let me ask you, how would you respond to this move? Let us ask the gallery. How would you respond to your opponent trying to suddenly do all of these things? You want to push through and cut. Interesting. I think I'm going to go with Clefus's response over Gobadux. Clefus is actually on the right track. But that might not be Sente. Clefus, G4 isn't. This, on the other hand, is probably going to get a response out of your opponent because you're attaching to his stone. You're hurting him. So we're going to lean on this to attack this. Always show interest in something other than what you're truly interested in. So here we go with this. Look how interested we are in the bottom. Isn't it just so interesting? Tries to fight back, not just you know, sealing off some territory in the bottom. Yep, the high school theory again, man. It, I tell you, that's how you play Go. So, okay. Trying to defend. Forcing White to defend himself. Looks like uh, not a lot we can do. That's, that's Atari. Forcing Sacrifice. That's a really beautiful clump right there. Now, I'm a little surprised that White doesn't poke here. Maybe it's just me being bad. Maybe I'm just being bad. I would want to poke here. He plays here instead, which allows the Forcing move. And the Forcing move. This, I think, is times Suji. Before coming out. This board has suddenly turned very, very frightening. But it 
still has a lot more to go. Because white comes out, making sure they don't, don't have to go back and do anything weird, like kill us off. We're, we're pretty out, right? Black trying to net. White trying to come out with his group of stones. Immediately, black goes after his shape point because we can push through, or we can cut through, or we can do a lot of different things because they're small knights, and small knights aren't the strongest things on the board. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Or, wait, I'm wrong. No, I'm right. Yeah, we cut through there. White gets to take. Black solidifies his profit. White comes out, forcing Black to defend himself there as well. And suddenly, on this particular board, it would appear that the center area is fallen to white. And now here's what surprised me. After this exchange, after this exchange, and it looks like white sealing himself off, we have a clear uh, variation where the middle is in fact his, is white's. But this is now solidly black territory. This is solidly black territory. This is solidly black territory. White resigns. I was a little bit surprised that I wasn't keeping track of the score at this point. And yes, even the guesstimator says white is, um, well, the guesstimator is retarded. You have to forgive the guesstimator. It's an idiot. But things that's not, it's for some reason getting points to white over on this side of the board. But black has this available to him, right? Black has the push in here available to him. Black has an attack over here available to him because these stones over here aren't completely alive yet. And cool little endgame stuff. So yeah, the lower left is really, really, really huge. He, he sacrificed his stones, he built up that influence against the person who opened influence, right? Against the person who opened influence, he took the middle of the board away from him. So I will give him moral victory points for that one. That is a, that is a pretty strong moral victory if I've ever heard one. But too much was given up, and he has to resign. These kind of games are really interesting to go over, because they start off heavily, heavily influential, and then they just completely turn, do a 180 and just turns territory. Same thing here, turn, opened up territorial, and then wound up influential as he was trying to deal with Black's influence. Very weird, very weird game. Also, not the only one that I wanted to go over. I also wanted to go over this game. Um, rule set, here we go. This one's a little bit different, a little higher caliber. Let's see, who is, let's see, get this correct. Uh, you, you, there we go. You are not a one done, you are five done. There we go. So the second game I wanted to go over is also an influential game. This is also an influential game. 
but it's not the influence like we see from um, Shibana. Now, I'm sure all of you know who Park Jung Wan is. What we're going to see here is kind of the other side of a game like that, where someone's trying to build up a lot and how to kind of interesting ways to deal with it, let's say. So for here, we have, and that might not be the right order of moves, but we have the low Chinese and white just encloses. For a long time, this was my favorite way of responding to uh, low Chinese. I like just getting some myself some territories, and if they extend, we can always we can always pincer the extension if it's too far away. Uh, I have seen a few Kenamat or cane mat or cannon mat. There we go. Now the downside of playing here is that Black can take large point for himself, and White just does the exact same thing. So starting looks like maybe a framework versus maybe a framework game, question mark. Make sure that white can't develop a framework. Only black is to develop a framework today. So we approach. And now here's an interesting thing. We could play we could play in between here and get into a fight but white says that he would rather prevent black from extending again and approach the 3-4 so he gets in the big move first make sure that he gets that before black does and then goes back and plays it so he plays that right there is opening theory for you the last large point on the board he takes for himself corners are spoken for sides are spoken for so we're going to get into end game and go ahead and throw in black jumps out could play here but then you're getting involved into like a whole bunch of weird variations I guess black trying to keep it simple White comes out, and now we see Black's true goal. He's really interested in the whole board idea. He jumped out, now he's trying to make maybe, maybe something, maybe something in here. You can see him trying to tie stones together. White says, no, you cannot do that. Black says, okay, then I will lean on the stone that you seem to have forgotten about. Alright. Attach it, see what object's in the corner. If we play not this, but if we play here, then this kind of thing is uh, available to white in order to try to settle. Black plays here. M3 is all by itself. So he connects up with a large knight. Kind of painful. Forces black to respond. And it looks like so far black's attempts to get influence not really gone all that well. White has been rather on point seeing what black wants to do and then just kind of trying to say no. Nicely connected. Once again, trying to connect everything up and make that area in the middle. Making sure that he can't expand and finish it off. Now, if you were black, if you were black, what would be on your mind for moves to consider playing? Where would you guys want to play? What would come into your head? What would you want to do?
What do we do? Black wants to resign, so says Yuta's robot. Hmm. Really? With all of this amazing influence, you want to resign? I don't know about that, Yuta. K14. Cluffus wants to cap the fourth line stone. Uh, Pofly. Pofly wants to... Wants to L15. Ah, you guys are like really into those shoulder hits now. Have you guys been studying AlphaGo? Right idea. He plays here. He's has in mind to get this, but if White defends himself first, then he can continue, or maybe we can just connect. Right? Got either or. Maybe. Black responds, or white responds rather, trying to, uh, you can kind of see the hole there. Black responds with attacking it. So this, is, this is a very odd assortment of moves. Black said, I want to cut you off. White says, I want to cut you off. And then Black said, no, 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 I really, really, really want to cut you off. And then White replies, no, 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 I really, really, really want to cut you off. No take backs. So a bit of a, a, bit of a strange situation here. But now that, we've, uh, now that we've made contact, it's time to start fighting. This connection is really cool. Sente forcing uh, defense over here. Same thing here, forcing defense and getting and getting a table shape. Continuing to look for all of those forcing moves against white stones. At this point, I thought that white. Maybe not doing so great. It looks like Black got his wish. He's being cut off. And now even this is being threatened to get cut off. So it's time to start reducing very quickly. And now those of you who are watching my games today, Attachment or shoulder it here in order to try to reduce. Shoulder it here for the exact same thing. Looks like we're just attaching to our opponent to try to see what we can get away with. Here's basic shape, one of the most basic shapes you can ever play. This I like. It's attempting to take large on top or middle. Maybe right, depending on how you play it. White just calmly defends himself. So black tries to follow up and take his territory. White fights that too. Something will die? Maybe. What are the odds I would go over an aggressive game where things get killed? Seems, seems unlikely, man. But all right. Black has been made stronger in the center. But there is a downside to all of this. White's really only got the one weak group right now. Right? And that's this one. And only one group that's weak that knows it's weak can probably usually most likely live. So we try to interrupt the shape. Surround. Honey. 
looks like we're getting uh, shape for ourselves. Black says no we aren't. White says yes we are. Can't connect. No longer a real eye. Looks like it's a false eye. Threaten to enclose. And then take. So it looks like this Chinese 5 Don wants to kill the Korean 9 Don. Wants to very much kill the Korean 9 Don because he's poking at all the shape points, getting rid of all the eyes. But he does take his profit while he's attacking. Trying to find life, I would be concerned. Threaten to go under, threaten to go under. Also steals off the corner nicely. Looking for the eyes. Looking to just surround. Looks like he's not uh, really interested in going all or nothing against the middle group. Whoops. How did that happen? This, this, this. There we go. Threatens to kill off the stone. And take an eye. So that was really, really nice there for white. White's getting all the shape points. And that throw in right there was really what did it. That one right there, despite the fact that it's not even an Atari. That was a pretty good that was a pretty good move. Black attacks. Um There we go. Now we go to Co. Threaten live in corner. Threaten live in corner. Threaten same thing. Again, same threat. Again, same, whoops. Again, same threat. This one's pretty big. This one's a fairly large one. I have to be careful about this one. Atari saying, no, you're not gonna connect up. Black says, I'm going to kill you. White says, no, you're not. And then takes these stones for himself. So now white, Black has to prove that was worthwhile and kill the middle off. Oops, wrong again. There we go. Threatening to take. Getting eye shape in here in the middle now. Again, threaten to go through. And retake the co. Not looking so healthy for white in the center right now. Blocks and retakes. Goes after all the things. So now this is the area that white has to live in. What do you think? Can we do it? Is white alive here? It was a pretty well surrounded area for black, not gonna lie. Can we live here? Is it possible? The 
possible? Is it not possible? What do you think? White starts with pulling back. This is making this a bit false because we can throw in. Gonna come up instead. Whoops. That right there is really amazing. Like we want to poke at it. Ah, uh, what the? Hmm. So we can't. So we try to go back to Kyle. Uh, that's under. I think that's right, yeah? Yeah, it is. Bit of a long cow. Did I miss something? Oh, no, I didn't. Duh. There we go. That makes sense now. Poke. Still in this wonderful cow. Poke. Threatens to kill off the, the one stone instead. Finally, black yields. Connects. Same thing here. I want to say retakes. No, he doesn't. He extends up to prevent the eyes. Okay. White then tries to kill, and retakes. Threatens to link up, connects, and retakes. It's an O3 small. O3, what is O3? Ah, not really, because it's forcing uh, O6, right? So now, this is cut off, so the co is kind of like escalated. We're now kind of warring over two groups in the middle of the board. But this is actually a very interesting ending to this game. Because while we're playing this, while we're playing this, oops, how did I miss this? Oh, retake, extend. Take, take. There we go. Bit of a bad move, uh, kind of occurring here. Oops. Retake, stupid. There, there. And there, and there. There we go. Threaten like underneath. Oh, right, connect. Looks like things aren't going too so well. Defend the one eye. Take. Drops down, trying to kill a corner off. Black says I'm going to turn and get my defense up. But black is not, or white is not having any of it. And has just killed the corner. Co did not go well for black in the corner. It can no longer survive. So if we drop down, we can go back and live. If we honey, who cares? So after this move, white wins by resignation. He has no choice. Black died during the co, but to be fair, it 
didn't look like the outside was gonna really be killed. There's like so many co threats there that White was just pulling out co threats for days. And then the co threats finally turned around and killed the corner. So that's a weird game. In the first game, we saw give up things to build up. And in this game, didn't really give anything up. It was just more about making solid shapes and shoulder hits in order to build up. So if you were a fan of building games, I hope you enjoyed these two games. I thought they were very interesting. I thought I liked Shibano's a lot more. The huge lengthy Ko in here. Mm, I like Ko. Ko is okay, but that's a pretty lengthy Ko. No offense to Park chung -wan. But in terms of influential games versus influential games, I kind of like Shibano a little bit better. Though how he handled this was kind of interesting. It's like, I just find a ko, live in the middle of the board, and everything's good. You can play influence. Shibano played influence. Shibano played influence, but it turned into territory. Right? This isn't really turning into territory. What we see on this board is more, you're dead, or I lose. Not quite the same. Not quite the same. So, take care, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the stream, and I will see you all next time. Good night.